Right move, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration will move to reclassify marijuana as a less dangerous drug. Yeah, so the DEA's proposal would move marijuana from a Schedule 1 drug to a Schedule 3 drug. So what does that exactly mean? Uh, joining us now to break it all down is Attorney Daniel Short, and he also teaches marijuana law over at UW. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you for having me on this historic day. Well, first off, I just kind of want to make sure we understand this. Uh, what is the difference between, say, a Schedule One drug and a Schedule Three drug? Yeah, so a Schedule One drug is considered to have no currently accepted medical use. Other examples of Schedule One drugs include heroin, MDMA, and LSD. Um, the Controlled Substance Act, which breaks down these drugs into different schedules, um, classifies Schedule One drugs as the most dangerous, and then Schedule Two, II, Three, Four, and Five as less dangerous. So, Schedule Two drugs include things like uh, this may surprise you, but fentanyl and cocaine. Um, schedule Three substances are things like ketamine. Um, uh, Tylenol with codeine, and in the future, uh, that's where marijuana will also sit. So as you know, Daniel, Washington State was one of the first to legalize recreational pot back in 2012. So knowing that, does this DEA decision impact Washington cannabis businesses at all, or is there just little impact in our state? So I think it will have impacts down the road, but not immediately. And to be clear, this is the first step in the process to eventually reschedule marijuana. There'll be rulemaking done by the DEA. Um, it'll be public in the Federal Register. And so this process will be ongoing. What rescheduling doesn't do is it's not going to legalize marijuana in sort of the way we might think about it. Um, if you think about you know, these substances, like let's say Tylenol with codeine, how do you get Tylenol with codeine? You go to a healthcare professional, it's prescribed, and then you go to your local pharmacy or it's um, provided to you sort of at the hospital or the doctor's office. Uh, consumers in Washington understand that, you know, these, these stores that we go to dispensary, retail stores, they're just selling one product. They're selling cannabis. That cannabis is grown and processed in the state of Washington in a tightly regulated system, but one that's outside of the, the federal system under the Controlled Substance Act, which is much more tightly regulated. So it won't impact the consumers necessarily right away. Um, but I think it will have impacts over time. And another important piece of this is one of the major issues in the cannabis industry is taxation. Um, because of another federal law, Internal Revenue Code 280 Cap E, marijuana businesses have not traditionally been able to take deductions um, that another business would, would take other than those for costs of goods sold. This rescheduling, if, if it does go through and marijuana is rescheduled to Schedule 3, then the IRFC 280E will no longer apply and businesses will be able to take deductions. Daniel, you did refer to this as just a historic day. So I'm wondering if you could put that into perspective. What makes you feel like this is such a historic day? Does this send a message in some way, uh, aside from the legalese of all this? So I do think it, it is a really historic day. This is the first time we've seen meaningful a, a meaningful shift in you know full THC marijuana. Um, it's been prohibited. For 70 plus years, the Controlled Substance Act has been around for for 30 or uh, for 50 years, and so this is a, a massive day of reform and, and a push forward. Now, some in my industry would say that it doesn't go nearly far enough, that it doesn't address some of the issues you know raised by the war on drugs, and it doesn't um, remove marijuana and legalize it um, across the country. Um, I think that that's a fair statement, and people will sort of feel differently about this. But I think, you know, no matter what, it is a major day, even if it doesn't resolve all the issues that you see with banking, insurance, and all these other um, industry problems. Attorney Daniel Shore, thank you so much for helping us all break that down.